Yes, Kingsley Uchendo. He wants to share a testimony. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So my name is Kingsley Uchendo. By God's grace, I am born again. I gave my life to Christ when I was 17 years old. And ever since, I've not stopped uh, loving God. I am from Adelabu District, Aguda Group, Old Surulere. So I am here to appreciate God for what God did yesterday. You know, when the program was on, I saw myself on the large screen, and um, I remembered what happened about 21 years ago while I was in school, boarding school. So we, uh, there was this scuffle that I had with another student. And um, I mean, in a split second, he just gave me a headbutt here. And it was swollen immediately. Like I felt the pain around the circumference of my brain. And um, I, was, I was really not balanced. So they, it was swollen. And um, trying to remember now, I believe it was like that for more than three days. So when eventually um, went down, that swollen uh, feeling went down, I, I saw that there was a depression on my frontal bone. And it's been there since then. But I felt it's something I could live with. But I thank God that yesterday, I, I said, if people are receiving miracle, that there's nothing God cannot do. Even if I think I am, I've made up my mind to live with the, with the depression. So I placed my hand just here, you know. Um, and I, when our father-in-law came, there was a confirmation. He, he structured the prayer and mentioned uh, every, I think, um, he said, deformity to structure the of the uh, of the bone in the neck and the vertebral colon or something. So I pr I bless God because I just felt it was for me. Because when I was even growing up, God delivered me from so many things, uh, from a broken hand sustained from uh, a nanny. When you know um, over ten years older than me, I just said I fell down. Then she landed on me uh, with her knee. And my leg was broken many times, hand broken. God delivered me, and God has been with me. Praise God. And I don't know if God had not intervened, um, you know, uh, since that time. That swollen thing was not ordinary, but God did it. And even yesterday, I felt God needed me to share this testimony of how he did it. Because even while I was in that boarding school, that day that the thing happened, the student um, said, that boy said, um, I think I have strength, I have power. Because it was actually premeditated, but God delivered me. Praise the Lord. So I want to thank God for our Father in the Lord, and I want to thank God for all that he's been, God has been doing through him for all the miracles. Praise God's the name Lord. Hallelujah. About 21 years ago, our brother had an accident with a, an assault from a colleague in secondary school. And had depression in his bone, in his, in his bone, that's the frontal part of his skull. And he has lived with that for 21 years. But yesterday, in obedience to the instruction of the man of God, he placed his hand there. And by the end of the prayer, it was normal. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Don't stop checking yourself because we're still hearing shouts of the touch of God. So please keep, keep, keep checking because the Lord is still moving in the camp. And once you see it, and once you see it, come to the left hand side of the stage so that you can share your testimony. I'm 
thanking God for healing me from stroke. On 26th of last month, when our pastor is in India, I went to church, and when I come back, as I lie down, something tapped me and said, man, you are free. <laughs> Since that day, I don't use the stuff I used to work out before. I have thrown it off. And when I heard about this retreat, I said that I must come for fleeting touches of the sickness. And yesterday, God will have done it again. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Lord. Mr. Iziala had a stroke about six months ago. And since then, he's been using a walking stick. By the last month, GCK, India, he received a miraculous touch from the Lord. And since then, he has not been using the walking stick. As you can see, he's not here with the walking stick. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Jubilations will not cease in our midst in the name of Jesus. As the Lord is doing wonders here, he's doing wonders online. And so right now, we're going to go online to listen to testimonies from online. It's indeed celebration of testimonies on the online sp space. And tonight we'll be starting from DCLM YouTube. We have Bumi Akiremi who says... My friend and I were listening to the pastor's message through my phone. She had feelings of weaknesses and Qatar. But during the prayer of the man of God, Emmanuel ushered her healing. And now she is very fine. Praise the Lord. Comfort for Lauren Shaw from DCLM YouTube has testified of how God healed her from waist pain that has been disturbing her standing, sitting, and sleeping postures. Hallelujah, she is healed. From Facebook, we have Daniel from Port Harcourt. He says, the Lord has healed me and delivered me from insanity, fear, acute spinal pain. Emmanuel has made me free. Shout, Emmanuel. And also from DCLM YouTube, we have James who says, yesterday I was healed of a problem of which it's, it's name I am unaware of. I used to go to the restroom almost six times a night. And it's come with severe pain with blood coming out. But yesterday, after the prayer of Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumoi, 
I got healed. Praise the Lord. And this one is from DLBC Facebook. My name is Antvi from Ghana. I was suffering from body itching, but when Pastor W.F. Kumi said the last amen, I got my healing. Now this one is special coming from GS's Facebook page. Paul Ogulaya says, glory be to God. I have just been healed of arthritis after the prayer of the man of God. Praise the Lord. Another striking testimony all the way from DCLM YouTube. We have Sheyi who says, thank God for healing me from waist pain and mild headache. Hallelujah. Luke John from Kaduna, Nigeria wrote, praise the Lord. This morning when I went to take my shower, my waist made a big noise and I managed to finish my bath. It was terrible for me today. But after the prayers of the man of God, I am healed. Praise the Lord. One is coming from YouTube here. Yeah? Three diseases left after the prayer of the man of God. Number one, cough. Number two, kata. Number three, head pain. Only Emmanuel can do this. Shout, Emmanuel. Praise the Lord. And also from DCLM YouTube, we have Oluremi who says, Praise God, I am healed of skin problems. Hallelujah. Favor Akere Dollar from Lagos has testified of how God healed her from a severe chest pain for three days. After the prayer of the man of God, a healing came. The miracle is not only happening in the night. Miracle is happening in the morning. Patience Ibitoye from YouTube says, I thank God for healing me from back pain after the prayer of the man of God this morning. Praise the Lord. Another striking testimony all the way from DCLM YouTube. We have Justice who says, My guilt and condemnation have been taken away. I feel light and free. Praise the Lord. Bulwatifia Deshino from YouTube said, Praise the Lord. I've been healed from neck pain. God is good. You need to hear this one. Pelumi Olarewaju from YouTube says, I have been facing mental challenges. Do you know the number of years? Mental challenges for about nine years. I thank God for healing me and answering my prayers. Somebody shout, Emmanuel is healed of mental challenges for about nine years after the prayer of the man of God. And we have another one from DCLM YouTube. We have Gershon who says, I have had an eye problem since the 13th of November, but today, somebody say today, I received my healing. Praise the Lord. Favor from Benin, Nigeria testified, I was having pains all over my body, but after the prayer of the man of God, the pain is gone. Praise the Lord. The Yoruba translation of miracle is Iyanu, and Iyanu from Ibadan, Southwest Nigeria says, I thank God for his miraculous and immediate healing. The pain in my neck just left after the prayer of the man of God tonight. In a word, she said, it was instantaneous. Glory be to God. Glory be to Emmanuel. Praise the Lord. And this is a very striking testimony. We have Emmanuel healing also Emmanuel. We have Alabi Emmanuel from Ikorodu, Nigeria, who says, I have just been healed from swelling in my private part after the pastor's message. Hallelujah. Pius from Bokatanga, Ghana. He said, I had some pains in my body, but after the prayers of the man of God, the pains disappeared. This situation is quite pathetic. Bernard Victoria from Enugu State, Nigeria says, I thank God for healing me from burning feet. I thank God for healing me from burning feet. The miracle happened yesterday after the prayer of the man of God. What God cannot do does not exist. Somebody shout, Emmanuel. 
And this is another striking testimony as well. This testimony is a proof that distance is no barrier to how far Emmanuel can heal an individual. We have Bro Michael from London, United Kingdom, who says, I have been having issues with my eyes for a long time. But after the prayers of the man of God, I can now read, read clearly without my glasses. Praise the Lord. And now we we'll return to the moderating of us here. Praise the Lord. Now we're going to take more testimonies from the Alpha location. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have here Elton Ab. I have here a following comforts. Who wants to give glory to God for what the Lord did for her? Praise the Lord. My name is Afolari Comfort. I'm from a uh, Mebamun group of districts. Uh, Wisdom, uh, Mebamun group, Wisdom district, Serenaisa, Okoko Maiko. I really bless the name of the Lord for what God has done for me. Uh, it happens that at the last December retreat that we had there on the 24th, I left this place with sorrow, with tears. Around 5 a.m., I couldn't control myself. I left this place down to the hospital because of what I was going through. And though before then I'll be having miscarriages, and that year, that one that ha happened here, this happens to be the last one, because I had 55 miscarriages. But God put an hand to it, and this, uh, for that one. Then the first GCK in Lagos, I've told God that any time that Papa said GCK will be holding in Lagos, that I will not miss it. And I give glory to God. Do a lot of things. Hindrances came. I said, no, I will be here. Lo and behold, God visited me. Moses Philip during the choir administration. And the song says, Lazarus, rise up. And I claim it. I said, this is mine. It is for me. Lo and behold, something that I know even especially coming out. And I, when I went back to the, uh, to the tent of my hall, I checked myself. Lo and behold, God has done it. I bless the name of the Lord. And I told God that as I'm going back home, that I don't want to see my period again. God did it. Lo and behold, I tested it positive and happened to be twins. So this is the reward. This is what God did for me in the first GCK that happened here in Lagos. I really bless the name of the Lord. And when I put to bed, it happens that the last GCK on September 2022, that was on the, on the, last, the last day of GCK September 2022. That was then I went to the hospital, and God did this. Though it's somehow very difficult, but God proved himself. That is the God that never disappoints. Because Papa said that it is, by mer it is by mercy, not by merit. That was what I was claiming. God, it is by mercy. But Papa has said this, by mercy, not by merit. And God did it. And the babies, they were alive, and I'm alive too. And my husband is alive. I really bless the name of the Lord because it doesn't disappoint me. Praise Master Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Our sister has had five recurrent miscarriages. Within three years, she had five miscarriages. She left that 2021 20, GCK with sorrow, but she has come back for the second Lagos GCK with joy. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you. 
Here with me is Elton Aban, who wants to testify of how the Lord turned his life around. Praise the Lord. Since when I was nine, around nine, eight, I've been an addict of smoking and taking drugs. So it also led to mental illness. illness. So coming here on Saturday, I gave my life to Christ. Then after the prayer of the man of God, I was also mentally deranged. But after the prayer of the man of God over my life, I got healed on Sunday. I was able to be able to say things normally and explain myself normally and by God's grace I'm healed. Praise the Lord. I give God the glory. I've been through a lot concerning this boy. I'm his mother. My name is Rachel Abam. Since I discovered that he has been an addicted boy, it was so surprising because I, I took them to church. I preached to them in the house. He even attended children church in the, the same church here. So I don't know how, where I got wrong. I don't know how I missed it. But I thank God for his great deliverance upon his life. If we did not give him drug, he would not sleep. He would not allow anybody to sleep in the house. But on Saturday, we were able to make it to this ground. And I pray to God that God will turn his life around. But yesterday, when Daddy was praying, he mentioned his case. And, and he said every mental uh, disorder, that God will remove it. And I believe it, that God has done it. He has been disturbing me since that last night that he wants to give the testimony. But because I have not seen the evidence in him, I did not allow him to come yesterday. But today, to God be the glory. My son is himself, and God has taken control. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Elton was saved on Saturday. On Sunday, he became coherent. Yesterday, he was healed of sleeplessness. Praise the Lord. Jesus, a shout of joy. Hallelujah. The testimonies are not over. Now we are going online for more testimonies. Indeed, Emmanuel lives every life with massive evidences. We bring you more testimonies from online. Daniel from Lagos, Nigeria said, I've received healing from an injury in my spine from an accident that happened earlier this year. God has done it. I've got my healing. Praise the Lord. The anointing of the Holy Ghost has touched Simeon anointed from Bielsa, Nigeria. He says, Hallelujah. Immediately after the prayer of the man of God yesterday, I was healed of terrible stooling and stomach ache. Praise the Lord. We have a massive testimony from Michael all the way from Ondo, Nigeria. He says, 
I could not clearly see what was written on the TV screen during the messages. But now, somebody say, but now. After the prayer of our Father in the Lord, I discovered I can see and read perfectly. Praise the Lord. Precious from Ondo State, Nigeria said, Praise the Lord. I was healed of a severe hand pain that had continuously disturbed me during the retreat. But after the prayers of the man of God, the pain disappeared. Deborah Daniel from Abia, Nigeria, was feeling H and C, okay, was feeling headache and catar before the GCK this evening. But as the GS finished praying, and after the final amen, shout that amen. amen. After the final amen, headache and catar H and C vanished. Praise the Lord. And we have Daniel Ezenwa who says, I was healed from serious pain in my left hand after the prayer of the man of God. Glory be to God. Chip Z from DCLM YouTube says, I have been suffering from a severe back pain, but after the man of God mentioned my case, I was immediately healed. Emmanuel's presence is a gain, actually. And every pain has been taken away after the prayer of the man of God since the beginning of this crusade. Deborah Adurabemi from Oshogo says, Thank you, Jesus Christ, for healing me from a chronic chest pain. After the prayer of the man of God, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui, praise the Lord, I am healed. Before you hear this testimony, I want you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I have my evidence. We bring you another testimony all the way from Facebook. Praise Patrick who says, praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for what he did to me yesterday. I had headache, which had been disturbing. But after the man of God mentioned my case, I got healed that same yesterday. Praise Master Jesus. Esther Adegbite from Zoom says, I was told to go for a scan after a medical checkup on Thursday because there was a problem in my kidney. On Friday, I raised the report and asked God to heal me when the man of God was praying. On Saturday, when I went for the scan, I was told that there is no problem with my kidney anymore. Who did it? Jesus. Praise God. From Kaduna State, Emmanuel Solomon wrote, on Saturday night, I received my healing from a certain piercing pain at my back during the GS final prayers. To God be the glory in Jesus' name. Say amen. And all the way from DCL, DCLM Facebook, we have Barnabas who says, from Cameroon, he says, I believe God has healed me from severe waist pain and body itches. Hallelujah. This is Ungozi from Ajegunle, Lagos. She says, I have been healed from severe headache, waist pain, and fever. Praise the Lord. If you are there, shout Emmanuel. Abigail says, praise the Lord. I just received my healing from a stomach pain after the prayer of the, of the man of God and after the pastor's message, I was delivered. Praise the Lord. And we have another striking testimony of a massive healing since 2020 when we had the pandemic. All the way from YouTube, we have Lois Egbe who says, I want to bless God for healing two of my family members and I from coronavirus in 2020 and in subsequent years. God indeed has been so good to me. Praise the Lord. Brian from DCLM YouTube says, I am healed from the left side pain of my body. Praise the Lord. The Lord is healing insanity. The Lord is healing headache, stomach ache, and different pains, body pains, and everything. And the Lord is also healing families from poverty. Shout amen. amen. Sarah Samuel from Edo, Nigeria says, Praise the Lord. I praise God for healing me from body pains. That's number one. 
and for settling my fam setting my family free from poverty. Who did it? Say Emmanuel. Praise the Lord. And we have another striking testimony all the way from DCLM YouTube. We have Life Praise who says, Praise the Lord. I thank God for deliverance from headache. It's been persistent. It comes and it goes. But this evening, somebody shout this evening. After the prayer of the man of God, it disappeared. And I believe it's gone forever. Hallelujah. We now return to the moderating pastor. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. The Lord has been faithful. We'll take more testimonies from the Alpha location right now. Praise the Lord. Here is Sister Esther Iko Oluyi, who wants to give thanks to God for what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for the privilege given to me to come to the Alpha location to share this testimony. My name is Sister Esther Iko Oluyi. During 2020, by the grace of God, I got married. We were to do it here in Lagos. But because it was coronavirus, we were asked to go to Ibadan. So we were 34 that wedded that year. And to the glory of God, getting into the marriage, I conceived. But on the 22nd September, the enemy struck. And when I got to the hospital, I told the doctor I was pregnant, and he confirmed it, but he said he didn't see any fetal pole, that I should come on the 23rd of September. So when I got there, before then, I had a dream, and the Lord revealed to me, I saw somebody was making call. And in that dream, after then, the person told me, to, uh, the person gave me a polythene nylon. When I checked into it, I saw spoiled tomatoes. I didn't really pray, I did not really understand the dream, but I got to the clinic the following day, and the doctor said, I'm sorry, madam, your pregnancy has spoiled. So during that period, the blood kept coming. It was flowing heavily all through the month. Then I cried to God. I said, God, I'm not the woman with the issue of blood. This is just a small thing for you to do. I need you to touch me. So during the divine touch, the Lord healed me. The blood stopped. So after which, because the pregnancy happened three times, I had miscarriages. The last one almost claimed my life. But I thank God because I am healed and healthy today. And to the glory of God, during the GCK 2021 December retreat, and that is a miracle explosion during 2021. I came down here. I told God at home because I, the Lord made me to understand and he showed me that every for five months, that is when the enemy targeted to be taking the pregnancy. So during the fifth month, I know that that very December I'm going to take in. But I told God that God, if what used to happen to me will happen again, do not allow this pregnancy to stay. But if what used to happen to me will not happen again, Daddy, please, let the pregnancy stay. Then I come to this place. And to the glory of God, my father in the Lord mentioned my case. One of the points when he was mentioned, he said, what used to happen to you before will not happen again? I felt like running outside and say, Father, this is me. So I thank the Lord because during that program, the Lord touched me. I took him to the glory of God and I gave birth to a bouncing baby girl and her name is Dominio and Miracle because of during Miracle Explosion. I want to give God the name, the glory because he has done all things well. And I pray that for many that are waiting upon the Lord, do not give up. The Lord is still with you and we show up at the right time for you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Praise, praise the Lord. Sister Esther and this had is the baby. three miscarriages within a year, but at GCK 2021, in this same Alpha location, the Lord changed our situation. Praise the Lord.
have here with me Mr. Uwan Kuo Ndubuisi wants to share a testimony. Praise the Lord. Praise mighty Jesus. My name is Uwan Kuo Ndubuisi from Orimeji Group, Old Bagadaji Street. I have many testimonies to give, but I'll give the one that happened Saturday, this last Saturday. Praise the Lord. Three weeks ago, I climbed four floors and I came down. Normally, I went home, slept. The following morning, I began to experience pain from my, this side, all my labs. I cannot sit down and stand up freely. And if I do, I have to wait more, two, three minutes before I now start to walk. I cannot walk, I cannot bend down, touch my toe for three weeks. Then my wife told me, Let, why don't we visit the hospital? But you know, I'm not the hospital type. I always take it to God in prayer. I told my, that since we are coming here for this double dose crusade and retreat, I will not go home with it again. We came here on Thursday morning, Thursday evening, Nothing happened, the pain was still there. Friday evening, nothing happened, the pain was still there. I said, no, it cannot happen. This Saturday evening, when we, we came here early enough, and I prayed, I told God, use, let GS mention this waist pain. I cannot go home with this waist pain again. Let GS mention this waist pain, and I know, as it's mentioned that waist pain, it will go. And Lo and behold, that Saturday, he mentioned waist pain. I claimed it. And as I got home, I told my wife, my daughter, I'm healed. But yesterday, Sunday, I said, let me wait. Let me still wait. I was sitting down, standing up, sitting down, standing up. Nothing happened. I said, today, I have to come and glorify the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our brother was ill of severe back pain that affected his ability to bend his spine. Praise the Lord. Let's rise up and join the choir as we praise God for his wondrous walk in our midst today. Hallelujah to his name. The Lord has done wonders in our midst tonight. Open your mouth and begin to say, Lord, we're grateful unto you for your wondrous works in the midst of your people. Thank you for your faithfulness to your word. 
We have had testimonies of others. I know the Lord has touched you. Can you say, Lord, we are grateful because your word is true, because your promises are sure. Open your mouth and exalt the name of the Lord. The word of God in the mouth of his servant has not fallen to the ground unfulfilled. And that's why you see the miracles being manifested. Can you exalt God? Appreciate him. He is worthy of our praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we are grateful unto you for what you have done in our midst today. Thank you for the obvious manifestation of your power in the midst of your people. Thank you because of your sure promises. Thank you for mighty healings. Thank you for mighty deliverances. Thank you because of the shorty of the words that have been spoken to your people. Thank you for the evidence in the healings that we have heard. Let your name be exalted in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that as your people go tonight, your presence will go with them in the name of Jesus. And tomorrow, we shall all be gathered to rejoice even the more in your presence in the name of Jesus. Every miracle that has been received in this place tonight are permanent in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you have answered our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Another amen. Your blessings are permanent in the name of Jesus. Are the youths here tonight? Can I hear you if you are here tonight? Hallelujah. Tomorrow is a special day for you. It's a special day for me. Yes, tomorrow right on this ground, 7 a.m. West African time. Of course, for those online, you join us at 6 o'clock GMT. We're going to be right here for a special time with our Father. You will not remain the same in the name of Jesus. And so I encourage every young person, secondary school students, undergraduates, you, or you're in the campus, in the university, or you're a young adult, make sure you start coming here from 6.30 in the morning so that together we can get the best that God has for us. At this end of the year, 2024 will be a different year for you in the name of Jesus. So make sure you don't miss it. And as you come, the Lord will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. And let's remember, the grand finale of this crusade is tomorrow. And so every one of us here now should report here in the evening tomorrow for the grand finale. Your life will never remain the same. You will not go home with any remnants of problems in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. With the authoritative anointing that God has put on me, rise up and stand. Rise up and walk. You're free from everything that binds you to that wheelchair. Crouches, drop them. anointing that God has put on me. Rise up and stand. Rise up 
and walk. You're free from every sin that binds you to that wheelchair. Crouches, drop them.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are grateful unto you. We bless you. We worship you. We adore you. We lift you up because of the great grace you have made available unto us. Father, we want to pray that as you look at your word, you will minister unto us. You will bless our heart. You will bless our life. And your name will be glorified and be exalted. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I am reading from 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof from such turn away. For this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captives, silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. I read again in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ, and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in the steward that a man be found faithful. Praise the Lord. Faithfulness to Christ in perilous times is what we are looking at. Understanding of this time we are living in will give us all it takes to live above the challenges. It is perilous times, last days, latter days, or the end of the world, and so on. As a result of this, its challenges, it is taking its toll on Christian lives, Christian commitment, and consecration. Faithfulness of believers is under constant threat for the conformity to the world's standard and norms in view of the multifaceted appearances and operations. It must be faced on all ground with all the weapons at our disposal. The enemy of man, Satan, is all, all out to lower our sincerity to the one who loves us and the one that you have decided to follow and serve, come what may. We cannot be careless, carefree, and handle with levity our faithfulness. Many started well in the spirit, but have drifted away into the flesh. That is what the scripture says in Galatians chapter 3 verse 3. Chapter 4, verse 9, departure from faithfulness does not come suddenly. It is a gradual process that graduates into outright backsliding and loss of faith and confidence in the supreme sacrifice of Jesus for the remission of sin and the wrath of God and salvation through the redemptive power. Because we are told, in him we are redemption. Through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. It is, in our, it is in our faithfulness that we enjoy his freedom and liberty. Because we have been called unto liberty. We have been called unto the freedom by God. So we are told in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty we are with Christ and made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke 
of bondage. It is my sincere prayer that the Lord will help us that we shall not run into the yoke of bondage. We shall not fall into the trap of the enemy. We shall not fall into backsliding. We shall not fall back from our, the call that God has called us unto faithfulness and true life living for the glory of his name. I have three parts in this message. Number one is the characteristics of the perilous time. Characteristics of the perilous time. In Matthew chapter 24, I want to read there in verse 12. Matthew chapter 24, I read there in verse 12. This is the word of the Lord. Matthew 24 verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wash cold. This is a terrible thing that the Lord is revealing to us today. In the last day, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wash cold. Many. And we need to plead and pray to God that God will help us. That why some people are falling by the wayside, why some people are no more standing in the grace of God, in the power of God, in the faithfulness of God, that we should remember that many people, many people, their love will fade away. Their love will grow cold. But we need to tell ourselves, my love will not grow cold. I make up my mind, I will not in any way retard. I will not go by, by sliding or going away from the will and the purpose of God for my life. This time, in its entirety, is against godliness. It's against righteousness and faithfulness. This time is a time that is contrary to the mind of God. It is a departure from the faith that we are experiencing at this time worldwide. And it doesn't matter where the nation is. It doesn't matter whether it is a developed nation, whether it is in developing nation, or whether it is in a rural area. It's the same thing. It's the departure from faith that man is noticing today. Because we are told in 1 Timothy chapter 4, I read there in verse 1. Now, the speak, speaker expressly that in the latter time, some shall depart from the faith, giving it to seducing spirit and doctrines of devil. Look at how devilish, how evil, how wicked, how far away this generation is from what it is supposed to be. I read that again, verse 1. Now, the spirits speak expressly, without any doubt, without any addition to be added to it, that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. This is the more reason why everyone, old and young, must be very careful because the scripture has not left us in doubt. Give it to seduce spirit and doctrines of devil. Wicked things will occupy the world. Wicked things will be happening all over the place. And because of that, it is necessary that everyone and everywhere we are, we keep to what the Lord has said and we are faithful. That is why we should recognize that this time is a perilous time. Perilous in the sense that many will depart from the faith. Perilous in the sense that the seducing spirit will be the order of the day. Not only that, in Galatians, in chapter 1, I read here in verse 4. We are looking at the characteristics of the perilous time. Verse 4. Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver all from this present evil world. Can you imagine that? This world that we are in, this perilous time that we are in is described in the Bible as present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Praise God that we are we are being told clearly without iota of doubt the characteristics of this time so that we can arm ourselves, so that we can prepare ourselves because the battle is raging 
And because the battle is raging, everyone must prepare himself because this world that we are in now is present evil world. Not only that, we can see also in 1 John 5, 19. 1 John 5, 19. And we know that we are of God. Thanks be to God for that. Glory be to the name of the Lord that we know that we are of God. And the whole world lied in wickedness. We are of God, but the whole world lied in wickedness. Lied in unrighteousness. Lied in evil. Lied in things that are contrary to the will, to the mind of God. And as a result of that, each one must now understand that the whole world lied in wickedness. And by the grace of God, the Lord will deliver us from the evil of the wicked thing that is now happening around us. In 1 John 2, let's read from verse 15. 1 John 2, 15. He said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And that is the thing now. The world is here. It's with us. We are in the world. But the Lord is telling us, the word of God is presenting unto us what should be our attitude to the world. He said, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. Oh, the world and the things that are in the world. Be careful. Because the Lord has not left us in darkness at all concerning what our love should be we say love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him and he goes on in verse 16 to now break down what the scripture is saying when he said love not the world he said for all that is in the world what are the things that are in the world the loss of the flesh and the loss of the of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. You can see the laws of the flesh, the laws of the eyes, and the pride of life, they are not for God. They are not on the side of God. They are not the will of God. They are not the plan and the program of God, but is of the world. And it tells us in verse 17, and the world passeth away. All these that we are looking at, they are passing away. And the lost thereof, but he that dwell the will of God abided forever. You will abide forever by the grace of God. But look at it carefully. This is a wicked world. This is an evil world. Don't love the world. The things of the flesh, be careful. The things of the eyes, be careful. The pride of life, be careful. They are all there and day in, day out. They are confronting the believer and they are waving hand to the believer to come along, to come along, to take it, to enjoy it, to be partakers of it. But be very careful. Not only that, let's look again into Philippians chapter 2 because the scripture is giving us sufficient description so that we will not be carried away in any way, in any form with what is going on in the world today. Philippians chapter 2. Let me read there in verse 15. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as light in the world. Look at the way it is described again. Look at the evil way the world is described so that you do and you are not partake of the world. You are not part of the world that ye may be blameless. For you not to be blameless and harmless, the sons of God that God has called us because we have received Christ into our life without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Crooked, perverse, evil, unrighteous nation among whom ye shine as light in the world. By the grace of God, the Lord will continually help us. The Lord will not leave us alone and we shall not be captured by the world or go contrary to the mind and the will of the almighty God. In, I read earlier on, but I want to read again 
to be able to show us more of the description of these latter days. In Matthew chapter 24, let me read again in verse 12. Matthew 24 in verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall was cool. This is a this is an indication that iniquity will abound, evil will abound, unrighteousness will abound, and it will be things that are accepted by everybody everywhere. But we must be very careful. Not to love them, not to be attracted by them. You cannot be of the world and be of Christ. Friendship with the world, like we are told in James 4 4, is the enmity with God. Jesus called believers out of the world because of his corruption and defilement. It is the tr it is this truth in Christ and our continuity that sets us free. Because say you will know the truth, and the truth shall set us free. And if the Son of God shall set us free, we shall be free. Indeed. Therefore, we must understand clearly what the mind of the Lord is about the world, about the activities of the world, about the evil of the world, about the wickedness that is going on in the world, so that we don't get ourselves entangled. We don't get ourselves into the problem of the world. And we are told in John chapter 15 to show you clearly what the world is, what the world can do, the evil the world can project, and the world, evil that the, the evil uh, the world can bring into one's life. In John chapter 15, I read there in verse 18. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Because we are of Christ, we are on one side. The world is on another side. Verse 19, I say, if you are of the world, the world will love you. The world will love its own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Look at this great revelation. God saw the world wicked, evil, crooked, unrighteous and he brought us he chose us he delivered us he set us free he opened our eyes to understand and to see like titus in his epistle was writing that the grace of god that brings us salvation had appeared to all men thanks be to god it appeared to us and by the grace of god we are now in the fullness of the lord and we have seen the light we are rejoicing the light in chapter 17 of John. I'm reading there in verse 6. John 17, 6. I have manifested my name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Out of the world. This is very important. That each of us must know you cannot be the same with the world. You cannot walk the way they walk. You cannot go the way they go. You cannot appreciate what they appreciate. You cannot say what they are saying. You cannot do what they are doing. You cannot see the way they are seen. You cannot dress the way they are dressing. You cannot appear the way they are appearing. Your aspiration and your goal cannot be with the world. No, not at all. I read there in verse 6 again. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou givest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou givest them me. And they have kept thy word. Thanks be to God. God gave us to Jesus. Thanks be to God that we are of the Lord. Thanks be to God for the great thing that the Lord has done. Look at it again in verse 14. I have given them thy word, and the word had hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. He said two, two, two cannot work together except they be agreed. We are not of the world. We are of God. We are in light. We are with Jesus Christ. And so the world cannot agree with us. We cannot agree with the world. Look at it in verse 16. Verse 16 says, They are not of the world. Clearly stated. And this is stated by Jesus. This is the voice of Jesus. 
they are not of the world. Even as I'm not of the world, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. Thank be to God. The Lord has set us apart for us to show forth his praises, for us to show forth his glory. And we thank God for the great thing that we have seen here. Jesus is not of this world. Jesus is the light of the world. And thanks be to God. And because he's the light of the world, he has given us this light. And this light is the light of life. Oh, it is wonderful. You must be in Jesus before you can be faithful to him. He will shed light into your life and be able to have the light of life. It is in the light of this that you can live in the light. Beam the light. Faithfully walk in the light. This gives the victory. When you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, you come out of darkness into his marvelous light. Like we are told in 1 Peter 2, 9. We come into marvelous light of the Lord. And the great, the great thing that... Uh, Great thing will happen, and we are partakers. Let me read that in 1 uh, Peter 2 9. 1 Peter 2 9. But you are a chosen generation. You can see that you are not just one of them. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the presence of Him which has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Thank God. We are called out of somewhere into another. We are called out of darkness. We have now, and we are now being brought into the marvelous light. And thanks be to God for this. We have left darkness into the marvelous light. And look at it in 1 John 1 1. 1 John 1 1. That which you have seen from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, which our eyes, with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the world of life. Thanks be to God. This is what the Lord is saying. The thing that we have seen, the thing we have looked upon, the things we have handled, and from the beginning, what we have heard. This is what we are called to be faithful to, because clearly, what you have heard, what you have seen, what is going on around today should not dominate our life. But what we have heard, what we have seen, what we have looked upon, what we have handled should dominate our life. In Philippians chapter 4, I read there in verse 9. Philippians chapter 4 verse 9. This thing which ye have heard, I'm sorry, this, those things which ye have both learned, and receive and have and see in me do and the God of peace be with you. Thanks be to God for that. That that you have seen, that that you have heard, that you have handled, that that you have looked upon, that that is revealed to you, the revelation of God. Thanks be to God. Those are the things that the Lord is asking us to be faithful in doing, to be faithful in handling and the God of heaven be with us all in Jesus name. That leads me to the second part, courage to persevere in trouble. You know, it is a perilous time. And when we say perilous, it means it is dangerous. It is evil. It is not right. It is not according to godliness. No, not at all. So, in 1 Peter chapter 5, in verse 10, 1 Peter 5, 10, But the God of all grace, who had called us, Unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that, ye have suffered a while. Make you perfect, established, strengthened, and said to you. Look at it from the first part. It says, But the God of all grace, the grace you need, the power you need, the ability you need, the strength you need, all that you need. To be able to stand against all the evil because he knows what is in the world. It's after that, ye have, ye have suffered a while. Make the Lord will make you perfect. Say amen. 
the Lord will establish you, say amen. The Lord will strengthen you, say amen. The Lord will say to you, wonderful. This is what the Lord is able to do. This is the courage we have by the grace of God. This is the understanding we have by the power of the Almighty God. Challenges of life come under different shades. And they confuse, they confound, confront, and counter establish convictions and stand. Look at the enemy. Look at the work that the world is doing. Look at all that the world is doing today. It's painted black, white. And it's under, underneath it is only coating the black, white. But truly, it is black. Stand still in the effect and give room. Because when anybody is... I say that again. Challenge of life come under different shades. And they confuse, they confront, and counter establish convictions and stand. Such will in fact give room to alternatives. Alternatives. The truth is there. The right way is there. But it will give room to alternatives. Why are you going that way? There's another way here. There's another thing here. There's another revelation here. There's another truth there. Giving room to alternatives that border on unfaithfulness. These alternatives, they are the ones that are referred to in Galatians chapter 1 as another gospel. Another gospel. And we should be very careful. Man wants to look for ease. An easy way. And alternative out of troubles and hardship. But the word of God has not left us in doubt because he said those that will live godly in Christ Jesus, they will suffer persecution. And because of that, we should be ready. And that is why what we are listening to is important to every one of us to take note and to be very careful so that we are not carried away by whatever is happening in the world today. We are told in John's Gospel, chapter 16, in verse 33, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace, because there is lack of peace in the world. There is lack of joy in the world. There is lack of perfect life in the world. In the world, you shall have tribulation. Can you imagine that? In the world, you will have tribulation. Then, be a good cheer. I have overcome the world. Thank be to God that in the world, there are problems. In the world, there are difficulties. In the world, there are sorrow. In the world, there are uneasy things. But the Lord is saying, I have overcome the world. Thanks be to God that the Lord has overcome the world for you, for me, for us as believers. And to God be the glory in Jesus' name. Such comes, this type of evil they come, like tribulation, like persecution, like imprisonment, like denial of rights, like threats to life, like even threats to our properties and whatever you possess as a believer. Ah, they come as fear, they, they create fear in our heart. But thank be to God that the Lord is telling us, fear not. They come as rulers, they come as leaders, they come as chastisement, they come as family challenges, oppressions, disaster, fear of tomorrow, fear of enemy, confrontation. But in the midst of all this, the Lord is calling us to be able to stand and to be unmovable in, the, in, the, in, in what is happening and in what the enemy is doing today. Let's read a few verses in the Bible to see what the way it has happened. How they wanted the people not to be able to stand faithfully, but you will stand. Because you are hearing it today, we, you will stand. In, as of the Apostles chapter 4, I'm reading there in verse 18. Acts chapter 4 in verse 18. And they called them, they called the Apostles. And commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that, brethren? Can you imagine that, believers? That some people will be bold enough and they will say, don't talk again in the name of Jesus. And so, 
It is not strange. It is one of the happenings of the last days. And in verse 19, the Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you, more than unto God, judge ye. It's in your hand. You are the one who will say, I won't go that way. You are the one who will say, God is on my side. And because God is on your side, and the greater one is on your side, you can boldly say, no, I will not. I will not yield to what you are saying. I will not go the direction you want me to go. In chapter 5, let's look at it in verse 18. These people will not stop. Even when you say no, never you think that they will give up. Never you think that they will not come again. If they use one method and that method didn't catch you, they will use another one. If they come one way and that way didn't catch you, didn't go over your life, or they give solution in one way, it didn't go over your life, never you say that, they will not come again. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 5, in verse 18. And laid their hands on the apostles and put them in common prison. Can you imagine that? Because of the word of God, they didn't steal. They didn't abuse anybody. They didn't go contrary to the government. And they said, oh, these people, they should be put into prison. Prison should be their place but by the grace of God. Wherever they put us, wherever we find ourselves, we shall remain faithful. Therefore, the faithfulness that we are talking about, it involves our calling. The call of God on our life, we should be very faithful in our calling and i pray god that the lord will help you to be faithful because the lord has called us into this ministry in ephesians chapter 4 in verse 11 and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers can you see that this is our calling god has called us he called us to be apostles god has called us to be prophets god has called us to be evangelists, God has called us to be pastors and teachers. To do the work of God. This is the call that God has called us. God called Moses to deliver the children of Israel. God called Jeremiah to deliver nations. God has called us also, also to preach the gospel. Everywhere, in all places, no matter what is happening, no matter what is going on, and the God of heaven, he will be with us. He has called us unto faithful service. That is what we read earlier on. Let me read again in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, in verse 1. 1 Corinthians 4, 1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and steward of the mystery of God. Moreover, it is required in a steward that a man be found faithful. The Lord is calling us into his service and is calling us unto faithfulness. So we must do it in a faithful way. We must do it in an acceptable way, not necessarily your own way, not the way you want. No, we must be obedient to the word of God. That is what God has called us unto. We must be obedient to evangelism and soul winning. That is what the Lord has called us unto. Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is what the Lord is saying. And he has called us to go out and to do it wholeheartedly without any doubt in our heart. And look at what Paul said in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, in verse 19. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, let me read there in verse 19. There we have it. Where upon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Wonderful. There is the vision of the world. There is the heavenly vision.
the whole counsel of God, not half truth, not half hearted. No, the whole counsel, the whole counsel. Oh, praise God. For I have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Thanks be to God for this great and wonderful thing that will come on our way. I need to tell us also that in the midst of this, there will be persecution. There will be trials. And look at it in chapter 20 there, beginning at verse 24. Beginning at verse 24. But none of these things move me. Let me read from verse 23. Save that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying that bonds and affliction abide me, waiting for me. Bonds, affliction, they are waiting ahead. But let us look at his attitude, his steadfastness. Let us look at his way. He stood against this in verse 24. But none of this move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Thanks be to God. It is wonderful. He knows what he is. He knows what he is doing. He knows what he is able to do. And it is because nothing will move him because of whom he has believed. 